Hey guys, Artosis here, bringing you some more Cast Music Rock Star League. Right now, we are trying to figure out who the last player going to the round of eight will end up being. <clears throat> Is it going to be Mind, who already took game number one, or will Absolute come back with a 2 0 reverse sweep uh, to move on to a very prestigious round of eight? We shall see here momentarily if he begins that comeback or not. Right now, we are on Allegro. And yeah, it's time to see if Absolute has what it takes. It felt like he played like pretty well against Mind. His Mutalisk uh, Micro wasn't quite up to the task, but Mind played uh, extremely solidly. Like I, I think that the thing that I really took away from the game personally as a Terran player was the way that he did not rush into the Natch or when the Lurkers weren't ready. Instead, he knew that the Mutas had to try to slow him down and he just stayed there and reduced that Mutalist count quite a bit, which really uh, hurt Absolute later on when he was trying to hold some of the uh, attacks that Mind was trying to pull off. So, yeah, very cool game there and some killer instinct for sure, especially that defense matrix. Love to see the tactics. Yeah, that's uh, that was a pretty decent game number one. I liked it. Uh, Allegro, a four-player map. Uh, you know, we have high grounds and stuff. It actually plays, like, very normally in this matchup, uh, whereas Sylphid is a little bit different, right? Like, I, I was mentioning on Sylphid about how Mutalist Harassment can be very, very strong. It, we didn't really see it that game. It feels like Absolute, maybe not. One of the top Muta guys. Like, I I think if you saw, like, Nine Drone or Soma or maybe Queen against Mind, it would look a lot different than than what we saw there as far as uh, the Mutalist Harassment goes. But on Allegro, it's actually, it's pretty easy to block Mutalist Harassment. Uh, all the spots have a lot of room for turrets. The minerals are not up against high grounds, right? Like, look here, right? The, there's, like, one mineral that's up against high grounds. Plenty of places to put turrets. Here, the, the minerals will be here and the high ground is here right so there's it's just you don't get to just kind of get like free kills all the time like you do on Sylphid. uh definitely makes a big difference on how you feel on a map this is this is definitely a map where you can just play a very standard tbz macro game but honestly that's what mine did in the previous game anyways so would not be surprised to be seeing that again here in game number two well, he's gonna go ahead and scout absolute we have that uh, gas going, and, you know, he sees the timings of everything. Very standard two-hatch gas. And we'll see what time the layer is exactly. Honestly, it's cross-spawns, so you're not really too afraid of anything here. And, yeah, that's like a 249-ish uh, layer coming up, and mine's going to know that, of course. So uh, generally considered a pretty aggressive opener. There is the second Rax coming, and look at this. He actually floats the first Rax down here and makes a partial wall. So that's kind of cool. You don't see that very often, right? Uh, if you see a, a Rax on wall, generally it's with depots, and he might actually end up making depots here. But yeah, this is a very wide open choke, so it makes sense in a lot of ways why he floated this down uh, to just help block a little bit, because yeah, when you get wide open chokes like this, it's very hard to stop speedlings. I tell you, seriously, like the, the nicknames that they came up with for pro gamers for the most part are fantastic. Uh, I've mentioned before, Mind was known as the Scholar Terran because his, like if you watch him play, it just, it, it reeks of brains. You watch it and you're like, yeah, this is smart. This is smart. This is smart. Wow, this is a very, very smart player that we're watching. And I feel like we're seeing that again right now. I, you know, he hasn't, been the same level since the end of the Kespa days. And in fact, even in the Kespa days, he had some ups and downs. Uh, you know, he he definitely had some uh, other things going on in his life and could not quite dedicate himself, it, it seems, as much as some of the other pros. Uh, or maybe he would have been a, a more than a one-time champion. But honestly, watching his play here, I'm like, if he, if he continues the grind in StarCraft 1, like if he continues practicing as hard as he is right now, this is a guy where I'm like, yeah, this... You know, we talk a lot about Rush and Royal and Barracks and these other up-and-coming Terran players that are doing really well, but there was a point in time where we really didn't know in StarCraft 1. We knew the next, like, King of Terran would be either Flash or Mind. That that was actually a moment in time in Brood War history, just so you guys know, right? And it ended up being Flash, and Flash ended up being the greatest of all time. But Mind is of such a level that that was a question at one point. Uh, either way, I feel like he is playing just some awesome, awesome StarCraft here. 
Uh, I'll stop doting on him now. I'm sure you guys are getting sick of it, but really, mine, mine has always been, you can ask anyone, he's always been one of my favorites. Uh, anyways, so the Zergling sees this two racks Academy Rush, right? Like, mine is just walking out across the map. What he wants to do here is force Sunkins. He knows he's not going to get damage, but, I mean, if he was crazy enough to go all the way across, you might, you might take damage. In fact, we saw that uh, a Creep Colony had started for Absolute, and then he canceled. And that's actually the right the right choice, right? Like, uh, the even the starting it is, like, a little bit questionable, but it's better to have the reflexes where you start it and then just be like, oh, wait, no. My meters are actually going to be out on time. I don't need to worry about this. There's no way. Uh, and mine does turn around and walk home. You know, in some situations against weaker players, he's going to force a, a sunk in there that you don't need, and that's one less drone. So that move becomes very valuable. Now, plenty of missile turrets being made. There's the third barracks. And here come the Mutas. All right. I don't think that they're going to find any way in to begin. This area is a little bit weak. A little bit weak. And it, it, wow, he ran really far out to force his stuff back. Uh, when the Muta count is really low, like the very first group of Mutas that come in, like six Mutas, uh, you can absolutely be out in the front without range. But as more Mutas join, if you don't have range, you can get picked apart. Uh, but range just finished for mine. So he is going to be safe. He's going to be fine there. This turret, oh, he's actually not going to dive on turrets. Instead, going to pick off some SCVs. And this is actually a very good move for Absolute. I like this a lot. The SCV count is actually already weak in the main base. Uh, wow. Wow. He went from 28 SCVs to 19. So that is a huge amount of kills right there. Uh, and that is a weak Terran economy. You're going to have to produce SCVs like non-stop here. So you have to decide, am I skipping Marines or am I getting a very late factory? Uh, it looks like Mind has decided, you know, he went for a little bit of a counterattack. This is one way to get the Mutalisks out of your base to get them to leave you alone. But Absolute this time, look at this. He's killing off some Marines. Oh, he loses a Muta there, but he's reducing this, this Marine count quite a bit. There is another group of Marines coming down. The Overlord sees them coming, so he has a good idea of what's going on. Trying to finish off the Marines and Medics over here, but he's got to worry about this base as well. Now, look at this. A single sunken colony that can be taken out, but with some additional units, six Marines are not going to do that well. And, of course, over here without Medics, you definitely can kill off these Marines. They are not going to get healed. The Stim dealing uh, so much damage there as well. And, yeah, he'll, he'll eliminate those, but only three Mutas remain. The rest of Mine's army does retreat. Trying to rejoin up with some more Marines and Medics as well. Overlord going to get taken out. That plus one attack is almost done. The Mutalus count has been reinforced. We're up to, what is this now? Ten Mutas with that plus one attack just now. So, like, these Mutas can take out all these Marines. Absolutely. This is a very small group. But a second group is going down the side again. So Absolute needs to deal with this, and then he needs to go deal with the other group as well, which I'm sure he is on top of. Uh, getting the Marines is awesome. Killing the Medics is a huge bonus, but he has to go across the map right now and deal with these Marines before he loses all his drones. The drones being pulled off to the side. Hydralis Den is up, and he's going to get a full scout of that as well. Marines getting on top of these drones. The drones come up to fight. The Marines turn onto the Mutas, but you know what? He saves most of the drones there. Kills that Bioforce once again. The only sad part for Absolute here really is the retreat of the medics. <laughs> the medics do get out and they've actually gained a lot of energy. So these are some high quality units that were saved. That's actually one of the big things in bio fights. You don't want to lose your medics in this matchup. They take longer, they're more expensive, and they are more of a long-term unit that gain you value over time. So anyways, keeps those alive. Big moment there for mine. And the Mutas come up for that harassment. He's kept this bio count very, very low. It looks like this uh, starport is being made here. What are we at? We're at 9 minutes and 30 seconds. It's not quite done yet. Uh, so, actually, I mean, he got his factory at a reasonable time. That means he's on four racks as well. He's refilled his SCV count reasonably well also. Uh, 35 SCVs, like I was mentioning before, if you have like 33, 34, 35 SCVs on two bases, you're pretty good. Of course, after you start getting your tech in there, you do want to start making more SCVs so that you can go ahead and fill up those other bases as you take them. 
Now let's take a look at Absolute's position a little bit closer now. We have the Lurker upgrade almost done. Is he morphing any Hydras here? He is. Okay, so two Hydras being made, and that's going to allow him to hold this ramp very cleanly. There is a big bio force starting to make it down. The Mutas are going to have to slow this a little bit. Uh, generally, what you're going to want to do is run the Lurkers up to the ramp to morph uh, so that you make a wall. But reverse ramps are tough. You cannot block with one Lurker egg. You have to use two, or the Marine Medic can actually run up by the Lurker egg. It's just a reverse ramps, man. They have all sorts of things wrong with them. <laughs> it's just the, the nature of the game. Uh, but yeah, well, maybe that's a thing that's right with them, honestly. Why would one egg block that entire ramp? It's kind of silly. But you know what? He bought enough time with the Mules anyways. It doesn't matter. The lurkers are done. They burrow at the top of the ramp. You're not going to break that right now. Uh, three lurkers burrowing at the natural. We have consume started, plus one care pace, halfway done. Macro hatchery coming up. And, of course, he has got the Nidus right there where he can do the reinforcements right into this bottom left main base. Okay, so Absolute has shown exactly what he's doing to us. Uh, and, of course, on mine side, there's not a question. When you get two Starport going, that's it. You're on you're on SK Terran. There's no real transition out of that uh, from two Starport anymore. There was, like, five years ago you could go into mech from a position like this, but not anymore. Uh, this is most definitely going to stay on that SK Terran. Lots of science vessels, lots of marines and medics, maybe drop ships. May in fact, he is making some drop ships and maybe battle cruisers at some point. That's all kind of stylistic things. Some Terrans like it, some Terrans don't. Uh, so a lot of bio being fielded onto the map. And you can see, ooh, that's a great catch. Kind of calculating where he thought those mutas would move to. Absolute though, with that quick response, is going to pull those out of there mind moving into the center and you know when you have drop ships one of the most important things is to clear zerglings clear overlords everything like that off the map you don't want them to see uh where those drop ships are coming and in fact just making the map dark makes zerg afraid of drop ships a lot of times what you do is if the map is a bit dark you keep your mutas back in one of the bases to help clean up any incoming drops that may may occur we'll probably see him park these like over here or, yeah, there that's fine as well. But you see, this is going to be anti-drop for him now. Now, consume is done. Oh, my God. How many drop ships? He's going for five? Five? That's crazy. Okay. Uh, and this is, this is absolutely nuts as well. We never, ever, ever, ever see anyone do this. Like, as a fourth base... Look, he's taking this as if this is his fourth, but that's his real hidden fourth right there. And in fact, this can lead into other plays as well, such as a Nidus, where suddenly you have a Defiler push that comes out from an angle you don't expect. But the Marine went up here, so the Marine is going to see that. He probably should be able to shut that down without uh, too much trouble. Uh, but you know what? If he's up there shutting that down, maybe that buys more time for this hatchery to be up. I, this is a really interesting play for a lot of reasons from Absolute. Now, the five dropship is madness. Four dropship is a real strat where you go like two to four vessels into four dropship, but five, I've literally never seen this. Let's, it might even be a mistake. He might've been going for four and like something desynced, he got spy blocked or whatever, he ended up making five. Okay, here he goes. He's just, he's dive bombing in. He has fire bats in here as well. Gets the defiler. Oh my God, two defilers pop out. He needs a dark swarm, but he doesn't have the energy. Oh my God. And without the energy there, he loses everything. That was like an 85 energy defiler. But it, I mean, one dark swarm probably saves this part of the base. But now these lurkers getting in here. Okay, a dark swarm goes down. So this lurker becomes pretty much invincible. Uh, it looks like a plague was cast down here as well. Throws down another dark swarm. Okay, I mean, he's lost the, the Hydralis Den. He's lost the Nidus. He's lost a lot of lurkers. He's lost a hatchery. He still has this hatchery, so that's something. Unfortunately, Mind also, of course, with that scout, saw this hatchery up here, so we'll end up killing that off. And this is just so much to deal with for Absolute. This is such a tough, tough, tough position. Another stim attack down here to kill off that fourth base location. And Absolute is taking way too much damage at the moment. Look at this. Diving after that Nidus once again, saying, no way, you are not reinforcing up here. And does, in fact, pop it. Beautiful move. Sacrifices a lot of units for that. But I like the play quite a bit. Down goes this hatchery. Mind 
absolutely dominating. What can Absolute do? He's fielded a few Ultras. His economy's not that good, so I don't know what the Ultras are going to end up doing. They only have three Carapace right now. Of course, two of which is, uh, you know, the Chitinous Plating. He is about to finish the next Carapace, so that's actually really important against plus two attack, which mine does have. These Ultras would absolutely melt before that Carapace uh, finishes up there. So Mind sitting there on six barracks. Third Command Center is coming. The Third Command Center a little bit late because he was going so aggro and did take damage early on. So this is a late third uh, for Terran versus Zerg, but he, he's fine in this position, obviously. We already saw so much damage. A huge drop into the main base now as well. Some drones falling. Looks like Absolute was working on some additional uh, defense here as well. The Spire goes down. Such an important piece of tech. No more Scourge to help block these drops. But I think actually his dropships are all gone now, except for this one. So, I mean, at least there's that. At least at least Absolute has that. And honestly, his drone count's not terrible considering what's happened to him this game. But it doesn't feel like he has anything really going on. He's on defense right now. This small amount of Ultras don't feel like they're going to be able to, to do too much. Plus three is already on the way for Mind. Mind has, look at this, seven vessels. Crazy. Like, that is a lot of irradiates for a struggling Zerg player to deal with. Definitely feels like mine should end up winning this game. Some irradiates go down on these uh, Ultras. This is a nice little raid, right? Like, this third base, I was talking about how this is late. Dude, he's losing a lot of SCVs there to the Lings. Very well done. Uh, the Adrenal upgrade really paying off there. But another drop here in the bottom left. Lurker's coming up, trying to push everything back. Pushing this Lurker forward. Can he save the hatch? Or yeah, it looks like he will save the hatch. But, I mean, this is, again, a huge amount of damage. More irradiates going to be going down over here. Don't forget, he lost the spire, so you can't even stop this at all. Eraser time! Oh, my God. That is just filthy. And that's what happens when you lose your spire, guys. Like, <laughs> you don't have Scourge. Vessels are absolute insanity. A plague goes down on them, but, like, you... I mean, is there a Muta still? Yeah, there is one Muta, so... Yeah, maybe you can kill these. <laughs> but the damage is done. The damage is doing 25 drones total. What's his army? Three Lurkers. Ultra, Defiler, Ling. Dude, he has, like, five units. He's got 58 supply. That's not enough for anything. Look at that, the Ultra almost gets just destroyed on that first wave in. He throws down the Dark Swarm, but, like, who cares? It's really far away from the third base. Oh, man, everything that pops out dying instantly. And, yeah, Mind is going to be going to the round of eight, guys. Uh, just beautiful play from him. GG! And that means we're on to the round of eight.